it. All right, Ooh. everyone. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon. Depends where you are around the world. <laughs> we are here at uh, the Monica Campana series with um, special on women entrepreneurs and uh, people helping people. And today we have a very special guest all the way from Virginia. We have Nicole Malone, who is, uh, thank you, Nicole, for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Yes. And uh, she, um, just tell us your background. What have you been doing and uh, <laughs> what are you doing to, to help people in this, um, in these crazy times? Yeah. So try to make this long story short. <laughs> so I'm originally from New Jersey, spent 14 and a half years uh, in the Air Force. Uh, like most people, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life when I grew up. Um, so I switched to Intel in the military, relocated to Virginia. So that's what I'm doing now in Virginia. I've been here since 2011. So COVID happened, right? So more recently. So COVID happened, March. I worked for the federal government, so I was furloughed for about two months. So during that time, I decided to be productive and get my nutrition certification. So I took the precision nutrition uh, certification, passed the exam, had no intention of starting a business. It was just for my personal knowledge and education to you know, continue to make myself healthier. Um, but I got the certificate in the mail and I don't know what happened, just something, something happened, something clicked and I got the bright idea to start an LLC. Mind you, my husband was at work. Uh, he came home from work one day and I kind of said, surprise, honey, guess what I did today? <laughs> I now own Dark Horse Nutrition LLC. <laughs> so I officially launched in June. And the reason I of decided this year. of this year, okay. yeah. So the reason I decided to do that is because throughout my adult life, I struggled with my weight. Um, at my heaviest, I would say my wedding day um, in 2015, I was about 40 pounds overweight. Um, you know, yo-yo dieting, fad diets, crash diets, I've done it all. <laughs> and of course the weight came back on. Um, and I also struggled with mental health, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about later on. But, um, you know, through therapy and getting control of my mental and emotional health, obviously that led to lasting changes in my weight. Um, because now I'm losing weight for me. I'm, I'm healthier. I'm happier. And it led to uh, lasting weight loss. So I wanted to kind of help others do the same. So with my nutrition business, I focus not only on nutrition, but I focus on the mental, emotional, and physical health as well. So I really get down and personal with my clients to find out why they're doing what they're doing and why they're living a unhealthy or somewhat unhealthy lifestyle and kind of help them get back on track because I have personal experience. I can totally empathize. Um, so I know exactly where they're coming from. So I wanted to kind of, you know, help others achieve what I achieved um, in my life and just live a happier life. Wow. And um, so you said that, um, uh, w when did this shift happen? This, um, how many years ago? So yeah, so um, back in, I would say 1991, now I'm not going to go through my whole life from 91, but uh, my brother passed away and um, I didn't realize how, how much of an impact that had on me. So I was 11. Um, my parents obviously were grieving and, you know, were grieving in their own way and I was kind of left alone. So I didn't have the knowledge or um, tools to appropriately grieve or deal with loss or difficult things that, you know, come up in your everyday life. So it wasn't until I would say three years ago, I know it took a super long time, um, but three years ago, something just clicked. Um, I started, my anxiety started getting worse. I started thinking about my brother a lot more. Um, so I guess I took that as a sign as a universe saying, Nicole, get your crap together, deal with, deal with your stuff. So um, 
I went to therapy, did cognitive behavioral therapy, um, which helped me not grieve over the loss of my brother because we knew that was what was triggering my mental and emotional health issues, but give me the tools to, you know, kind of get it under control and learn to deal with it. Yeah. Um, So as soon as I finished that and felt better, like internally, emotionally, um, I then was in turn able to feel better physically. So I would say about three years ago um, is when everything clicked. I started um, eating better because I started feeling overall better. I've never felt that good in my life. I had more clarity. So I started eating better. I started, uh, I go to CrossFit. So I started uh, CrossFit. Doing exercise, physical exercise. Yeah. And eating better, like, did you follow any specific, uh, you know, diets or programs? Yeah. So um, I just believe in, I guess I can say intuitive eating because that's a big thing now, but it's, it's eating whole foods, minimally processed foods is what I preach to my clients. So I don't cut anything out of my diet. Just last night I had an ice cream sandwich for dessert. Um, But I just, I'm more mindful of what I'm putting into my body and how much I'm putting into my body. So once you feel good internally and emotionally, you'll then, that'll translate to the rest of your life. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, So once I got control over my mental and emotional well-being. I was then able to get control over my physical well-being and make last and make those lifestyle changes to make them last because again I was feeling overall better and it and it translated. So about three years ago, I dropped, I started, you know, eating better, working out, seeing therapists, and now I'm about 30, 30 plus pounds down wow, and able to amazing, keep it off. Nicole. Thank you. Wow. Huh. And now you, so you started this company to, to help people overcome those uh, obstacles, you know, that can be mental. I mean, a lot is mental, you know. Uh, it's I, mental and emotional. Yeah. There's, yeah. So it's very, very few people I have talked to, um, their issues with food or overeating is mostly mental and emotional. And being that I've dealt with that myself, I, I feel like, you know, I have that passion to, to show others that, yeah, and it doesn't have to be that hard. Yeah, it's hard going through it, but it, but food doesn't have to be that hard and difficult. So just dealing with those other issues will then in turn help with the food and, and the emotional eating or emotional drinking, whatever your vice is. So it all stems with the underlying issues. And I feel like a lot of nutrition coaches and a lot of services out there don't really focus on that a lot. And I, and I find that very unfortunate. They focus solely on the food, solely on the macronutrients. Yep. And they focus mostly on the macronutrients and the calories and just the food. But then once the person stops working with them, they gain the weight back because they don't know how to deal with the underlying issue. So I tend to focus more of my time on that because that's my passion is to help people just be overall healthier and happier. It's not all about the weight. It's about how you feel. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's wonderful. And so you created this, this um, company, is it online? Is it, um, is it a a course? Do you offer special courses throughout the year? Yep. So, um, it is an online nutrition coaching service. Um, I do have uh, a couple in-person clients. So if you're local to Northern Virginia, um, you know, close to Reston, Virginia, then I will, uh, you know, allow to see the person in, in person from time to time, but primarily I do on, on phone or on video, uh, weekly check-ins with my clients that are in Massachusetts uh, and New Jersey. And like I said, I have a couple in uh, Virginia now. Um, I do offer challenges. Uh, I did a 10 day clean eating challenge back in August, which again is to, you know, show people what the types of foods they should be eating, whole foods, minimally processed. I discussed what happens to the processing of foods and what you're really eating. So just education. Um, I gave a webinar um, about carbs mostly what people eat during Thanksgiving and what that does to your body, why you crash and why you just want to pass, pass out after dinner. Um, so I do give webinars. I do give workshops. I do give challenges. Um, I'm actually in the process of 
restructuring. So I'm going to start taking group uh, clients. So coach coaching in a group setting as well as um, individual one-to-one -one coaching. So I'll have a little bit for everyone. I'm hoping to launch that after the first of the year so I can help more people because not everyone's comfortable one-to-one. -one. Not everyone, you know, some people are comfortable in a group setting. They feel like they have their buddy with them for support. So I want to open it up for uh, the ability for more people to come in, uh, seek help in a, you know, Co uh, group setting if that's where they're comfortable. Yeah, and you would use like, um, uh, what, what do you use, like Zoom or um, Facebook, right? Yep, so I will do uh, Facebook Live Q&As and uh, yeah, so Zoom primarily for the uh, weekly check-ins, but I do offer uh, Facebook Live Q&As, uh, live, like I said, workshops, and uh, I post videos on my Facebook group from time to time, uh, educational and informative uh, videos like I my husband and I just recently moved uh, and a lot of a lot of stress happened so I kind of posted a video on what not to do using me as an example because yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a time I wasn't handling it pretty well so then I ended up being my own client <laughs> and helped myself do that but um, I I have no problem using myself as an example saying hey this is how I'm handling things uh, this is how you should handle things uh, and, and use me as an example because no one's perfect. So it's good to show, uh, you know, the people that are following you, your more human side too. Yeah. Now you just moved. I did. Yeah, yes. Because moving is one of the, it's very stressful. Moving is one of the most stressful experiences. In, in, in life so it adds up um, and yeah. so we're going to add I think I didn't put the link to your um, it's uh, what's the link of the page you have a page uh, is yeah, it public so, right now or is it so private my Facebook or my website your you have everything everything I mean you have yeah, a website so, right so my website is uh, darkhorse-nutrition.com and on Facebook it's at nutrition dark and I'm also on uh, Instagram. Instagram is mostly to promote my podcast, but it's at sneaky.fit. I also uh, post nutritional information on there as well um, on my Instagram. We're going to add all these um, handles um, in the post. So don't cool. worry. We're going to, so people can, can reach you from all different kinds of um, platforms and uh, so you have this podcast right and the podcast is mainly um again is is only voice because i still <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i think that podcast is only you know for radio or you know people who are in the car and they listen to uh, so what is it exactly that you offer in the podcast yeah so the podcast is called sneaky fit um it's health and wellness so all things health and wellness not just nutrition um, I've had chiropractors on there, uh, physical therapy assistants. I've had um, someone who's new to running. So it's a wide spectrum of health and wellness because there's a lot of misinformation out there on social media in the health and wellness space. So my goal is to provide as accurate as possible information, kind of set the record straight in a way of all the misinformation out there. Um, but I just started incorporating video to my podcast within the last month. So I am on YouTube um, and my video at my podcast, my audio podcast is hosted on Anchor. Okay, Anchor is another, see, I, I didn't hear about this one. No, another I, one. Anchor is a free podcasting host and they distribute your podcast to all the platforms. So I'm on Spotify, Breaker, uh, Radio Public and all sorts of other podcasts sites i've never even heard ah, <laughs> never so heard you, of you actually um send them the, your podcast or you upload the podcast to anchor I, and then yep. they they stream they automatically it. distribute oh wow That's yeah so i just have to upload the video to youtube and edit which video editing is a lot harder than i thought it was going to be i was just like oh i could just put the video up there upload it call it a day but yeah no <laughs> I know, I know. There's always, and then you just spend two, three hours just fixing yeah. one little thing. Just and one like, video. Okay, where's the day? Where did the day go? <laughs> you know, and, uh, but yeah, video editing is um, very time consuming. Yeah. It's where the, it's where the market's going though. It's yeah. everything's video now. Everything's, everything's social. Video. And you have a very catchy video. video, the sounds, the music, the colors, boom, you yeah. know, and you get uh, 5 million views and the other one gets five there you go five million <laughs> five million that's the goal 
Uh, wow, so Nicole, let me see, let me see. And one thing that, that I didn't really um, touch and base, but how long were you in the military? Yeah, so I was active duty for four and a half years. I was a military cop. Wow, um, military and then cop. I, I mean, we have yeah. to be careful here what we say. <laughs> I, said, I signed up uh, June of 2001. I was supposed to go to basic training August 22nd, 2001. Um, and then I was delayed for whatever reason. I forget now. Um, and then I was supposed to leave September 11th, 2001. Wow. So obviously things happened that day. Um, so I ended up getting to basic training September 14th, 2001, three days after uh, 9-11 happened. So the entire time we were in basic training, we were rushed through because we missed the first week because of 9-11. Yeah. Um, we thought we were going to go, we thought we were going to get shipped out um, to overseas once we graduated. Um, luckily, we graduated and we went off to our, I, I went off to my, the police academy and then again, we're the combat force of the Air Force. Um, so the military police and the Air Force is part of, you know, we deploy to the desert and we do kind of like air-based defense um, in war zones. So we thought we were going to go, we were going to graduate. And rather than go into our first base, we thought we were going to get shipped off um, overseas to help with the war. Um, Part of me Afghanistan, wishes that, no? in Afghanistan or where yeah, I think I think it started in Iraq and then yeah, it was Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, I did end up going to my first base. Part of me wishes I did get shipped off to the desert because I was sent to Minot, North Dakota, which gets like negative seventy in the winter wow. <laughs> and like ten feet of snow. But yeah, it was pretty scary. Um, so I that's how I started my military career was. Uh, during war. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, I switched to the Air National Guard in 2006 and served another 10 years and just got out um, March of 2016. So about four years ago, I got out. And you were in the um, computer dealing with the, with the, what, where, what did you specialize at the end? So at the end, um, I was an imagery analyst um, with the, with the Air Force. So yeah, so we, kind of analyzed the imagery that that was being sent and disseminated it out. So a lot of attention to detail and a lot of Yeah, you were in front of the computer all the time. You yeah. were doing a lot getting of getting headaches. Research. Yeah, uh -huh. in the dark. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dimly yeah. lit, but it's how I got my civilian job, so I'm grateful for that. I'm hoping I can transition and do nutrition full time. Um would be my dream. But, yeah, but uh, you're doing it. You're doing yeah. it and uh you know, you're building up the the first uh, the first few years, you know, it takes takes time to build your name and and uh, trust, but uh, slowly, yeah. slowly. If you have, uh, you know, you have the good foundations, so it's. Um, and I hope to to have you here again so that we can, you know, um, find out your new um, accomplishments. And uh, I'm gonna put all your information so that people can reach you. Uh, I, I wish you good luck with everything that you're doing. Thank you for helping uh, people have a better life and, uh, you know, one person at a time. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very, um, uh, we're very grateful for this, for people who, like you, who do this. So thank you again, Nicole, for being here. And, uh, and I hope to see you very soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. I love what you're doing uh, with this platform and, you know, showing the world all the great entrepreneurs out there who are doing great things, uh, especially during COVID. You know, we definitely need something like this to kind of bring a little bright spot in our day. So I definitely appreciate what you're doing here. And I'd love to come back if, if you'd have me sometime in the near future. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we want you back. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you again, everyone. Thank you for, for being here. And uh, we see you very soon with uh, um, more people helping people and uh, wonderful entrepreneurs like Nicole Malone. Until <laughs> then, have a wonderful day. See you later. Ciao, everyone. All right. Cool. Yeah.